All right, welcome everybody out to this replay review for my good friends, the Devil's Rejects. We are in the playoffs of Division E here, and we are screaming to uh, look for a championship run, my my friends and dudes. So let's see what we can get. Oh. that out of my view and I have a second monitor set up now so I can actually see when you guys tell me hey the stream's not working so that's a good thing all right we're gonna pause for a second let's look at our comp we got Junkrat who's a chaos damage we got Orphea who is a a bit of a bursty mage so I I like that. I I do worry if Junkrat can soften him up enough. Johanna, who's a very sustainy tank. Stukov, who's an extremely sustainy healer um, with some fantastic silences and a very durable offlaner in Urel. Let's look at our enemy comp. Sylvanas can be either burst or or sustain. Rainer's definitely sustain. Took Ace in the hole for the extra damage. Bold strategy by Anduin. And wave clear here, looking at taunt variant. Okay, so um, if I had to guess on the draft order, taunt variant was picked after Johanna, Rexar was picked before Urel, and yeah, those are the only ones that really stand out to me. But ways that we're gonna win down here on the bottom frankly we have better wave clear than they do not by a lot but by enough that if we can can slow sylvanas's wave clear we can get to camps a little bit faster and the way that we're going to slow sylvanas's wave clear is by having traps and mines and bushes so she can't come from that side is going to be by blinding her and rainer with joe by by having Junkrat kind of fulfill the idea of a PvP assassin. And his whole job is just to pump damage into the other team, so Anduin's busy with that. So now Anduin's not helping with the wave clear, he's focused on healing. And Sylvanas is worried about her ability to wave clear because Junkrat just keeps throwing grenades at her and mines and traps. Up here in our offlane, we're... We're not really going to win, but we're not really going to lose. You have two extremely du durable teams here. Um, I guess I didn't look at ours. Dauntless is fine. L Light of Karabor is one that I think people are sleeping on. Um, that seems fine. I, I really like the move speed, tricky shuffles. I love reactive blast of spheres. Ancestral strength is great and hold your ground is just fine too. So I I think all of our talent choices are fine. There's nothing that screams to me 20 seconds into the game that we've made a mistake. But let's unpause and get things going. So where it's not necessarily a rotation map, we just don't want to take a lot of damage in the beginning. We want to get this wave cleared and ooh, great scoop into the silence there. Okay, so we clear the wave now we just pump damage into him i like what ninja's doing here he got a little far forward if the rainer was paying attention he would have put more damage into orphea there Ooh, bad time to miss a q there on orphea yeah i uh let's see it's corso corso i don't love the trap in the middle i would rather see it in a bush as a ward for you guys to stop their ability to flank Okay, so we're at one minute. We finish the wave. We get. I love this. We've got three people going. Joe's staying here. Joe, your job is, is not to damage them. It's just to try to keep them here as long as possible. And so if that means you trade a, a shield cooldown, that's fine. So um, I can't see this well enough. All right, we got it capped almost at the same time. And experience, we're super close. They didn't go to their sentinel. While I, I do like being the first one to to cap this, we don't want to miss even that single globe there. 
So now, because they didn't take their Sentinel, our job again goes into that idea of we just want to stop them from leaving, and we want to stop them from damaging our Sentinel. Um, Net Dynasty, if you put that Silence Pit just a little more forward, ooh, great job, and the Sentinel finishes up. But if you if you put it just a little bit more forward, they had escapes on either side of it through. It still slowed them down, but we we just wanted it to be as obtuse as possible. We're getting mega value out of this, which is fantastic. Okay, it's gone, we back up, that's great. What are we gonna do? I think you leave Joe. Perfect. I love this. You leave Joe and three people go up to this camp. Um, Joe, you should have stayed. Joe, you should have stayed. Um, yes, you're coming back. Thank you for hearing me from the past to my current present and coming back. Again, your job here is just to keep them here as long as possible and catch that soak. You don't have to do an aggressive get the experience. You just have to make sure you pick it up. Um, so on the invade there, I, I, uh, let's back it up. I didn't see all of it, so I saw we were kind of moving that way. So right here, we just wanted to get probably Jack in there a little bit sooner, because Jack doesn't care about Varian. Varian is not going to kill Yorel at this point. And so we had a choice there. We could either go for the Rexar, um, which I think would have probably worked a little bit better, or we just have to absolutely, everybody goes there. We need to call Satan forward to get up there. So we just have a five man invade on that thing. We're delaying it well, Varian's getting pretty low. Silence was, was good, but it was just a touch later than we wanted. But this thing is not touching our walls, and our camp's back up by the time we travel there. Oh, Rexar only counts as one. Our camp's spawning. Our camp's spawning. The camp is more important than the cart. If we can keep the cart on the top half of the, half of the, half of the map, excuse me, and we we can get our sentinel that's a bigger deal even if we leave the cart right now and go get our sentinel now they have to choose like it, it's great we're pushing a fight we're up sevens great all around we're losing soak and wall health right here i mean we'll get this they're not going to stop it at this point So it's great, it's free siege. We lost a wave of experience that we didn't need to lose. We let them catch up. Yes, they they lost the objective of the map, the 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 scripted objective. But we're gonna back up here. I would guess that there's a minute that we leave this camp up. All right, camp spawns 354. Now we're going to speed this up. We already know what happens over here on the mini-map, so instead we're seeing just how long this camp is up before we get to it. Okay. Yeah, it's a minute. And it looks like it's more than one full wave. Oh, 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 oh. All right, so it's it's uh, seven minions worth of experience. So one wave, wave plus one. All right, back this up again, because I got distracted by the wave. Okay, so just under a minute that we we were uh, able to get that camp and we hadn't started it. Now, the the reason why we wanna do that is is kinda like a game of chess. So you, you've heard me talk about this idea of checkmate and check. We don't have to win a game with a checkmate. We, we, we 
rarely win a game with one boom we never even checked you we only checkmated you right instead we win a game through several checks that eventually lead into a checkmate and what that does in the game of chess is we're forcing the enemy player to react to stuff that we've done heroes is is no different for us we want to be the ones in control of the map we want to be the ones who dictate the pace of the game we want them to react to us i thought junkrat was going to catch that do we kill him probably not varian's pretty healthy right now he's got his boy anduin saving him with the leap of faith and so if we do that now one person can move the cart while three people move with the ninja and they have to match us on the 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 samurai camp the sentinel camp because if they don't have four people there the sentinel just gets insane value and so now one person moving the cart while we're walking with the sentinel and they can't means ooh, are we doing this again okay we need all five there we're we're in a 3v5 we're we're gonna have to back up so we're just losing time um, I don't think I'm in the schoolyard anymore. Okay. Um, sorry, I got distracted there. Let me rewind here. One more time. Okay, so we win this fight based on some simple principles that I'm glad you executed. One, we waited to truly engage until we were five. And two, we had tens, so we win. Stukov, great shove. We had kits in our, or uh, tools in our kit that they didn't have access to. We get two kills, that's fantastic. We should just siege with this right now. I, I, I appreciate the, uh, the attempt at the, the bomb, hey, it paid off. I love that we're sieging, and I love that Jack is, is down there sieging bottom. Because even though your rel siege is garbage, the minion wave does triple damage to structures. She just enabled the minion wave. So we got three quarters of the wall right there. We were able to back up and work with our minion wave on this. The payload is spawning, and our camp is spawning in seven seconds. So again, we want to create that, that check situation for them. Yes, good job Corso and Satan. Thank you for listening from the past. This isn't bad, the split, we're ahead. We can see them on the map, so we're allowed to split. We've got control of both of the visions, so we're allowed to split. Those, are, That's all good things. Um, I would have rather us ripped the Sentinel camp and then gone up to the turret camp, just because we're creating those check situations. And you're gonna hear me use that phraseology a bit more of, we, we have to have so many checks to eventually get to a checkmate. So here, they, they're they trying to defend the cart. As soon as they walk away from the cart, we charge at them. We don't push the cart, we charge at them. Because we don't want them to get this sentinel and we don't want all of these experience globes to drop. So we keep moving the cart and as soon as they get off the cart, we take an uneven fight under the sentinel. We're gonna get the cart in, we're gonna get away, it's free siege, it's not bad. But we want to trade good for better and better for best. Oh, the, uh, oh, we pushed R. We won that fight because we pushed R better than they pushed R, which is just fine. If if we can just synchronize how often we hit R, that's often enough. So two for one, probably gonna get a third. Sorry, Rexar, but we've just got enough chase to make this work. Okay, so right there, oh, we don't have speedy hammer. I thought you did for a second there. Okay, I understand why you swung when you did because you were walking slower. We get the kills, we move in on this. 
even if all we had done was scare Rexar off and we got to this right as it spawned, that's a win. So we are ahead of talent tier. We're up in numbers. We're doing exactly the right thing. There's two things that we want to do when we're up in numbers. We want to take something of theirs and we want to siege, which ultimately is another version of take something of theirs. Ooh, Varian mismicroed his uh, Banshee there and so it got sniped. <laughs> Nice shove. Sadly, it was Misha, not Varian. Ooh, Snugly's dead. Snugly's dead. Jack went down. And we're running. Alright, we're gonna back this one up. We want, we want to micromanage this fight. Alright, pause. Let's look at our positioning here. My favorite person for positioning right now is Corso. He's got a trap here protecting this potential flank position. I, I don't actually, or I guess it's deploying. You have another trap over here that's just from a previous fight. No big deal. You got to wait for cooldowns. And he is able to use his grenade range to just constantly fire into this fight. He doesn't have rip tire yet but it's super close. So my my thing for you guys is right here is we just need to be super safe until we've got rip tire ready. Cuz rip tire is a great way for us to stop something. Oh, and he even pinged rip tire. It's on my screen for crying out loud. Um we we wait for that a little bit. Um I would like to see Satan somewhere here in between Snuggly and Varian. Yes, Varian eventually can turn Joe into a kill target, but they're not 13 yet. He doesn't have Shattering Throw, so we don't really care about Varian as Joe yet. If they completely turn on us and we pop our shield too early and it fades, or we're too aggressive when it's down, yeah, that's a bad thing. But right now, what's worse is losing Snuggly on Orphea. So if we could have Joe right here and Yurel here in the wave and a concussion mine probably right in here, it, it just denies their ability to either engage or follow up on an engage. Okay, so we're going to unpause. Okay, so Jack came forward. Snugly went... Okay. So Snugly, you went really ham under a tower and got punished for it. Sorry, dude. You're wonderful. You got bloodthirsty, plain and simple. I don't think you're getting away, Corso. though. Yeah. So under keeps and forts, we need to make sure, oh, they're gonna let this fall for free. <laughs> we still got it. Um, we need to make sure, oh, Satan, I don't know that you finished this, brother. You run, you let it leash so they have as much time that it's uh, healthy as possible. Man, that thing's regening really slow. Okay, so back to what I was saying. Under the fort, under the keep, we don't want to hit the enemy team yet. I realize that feels great to hit the enemy team. What doesn't feel great is negative 20 armor and 10% increased damage in one of the most recent patches while under a fort. Those things don't feel great. This is a fight we want. I get it, they've got a turret, but the reason we want this fight is look at this wave we've built up. Double catapults and a sentinels marching behind. Alright, so now let's back up because I, I got caught up on the wave. So Jack sees him. Jack's like, bring it, we can do this. Satan gets in there first, I like that. Corso and Dynasty taking it a little safe. We jump on Varian, ooh. So we got too close and the light bomb wrecked us. That's what happened. That's the whole problem with that fight. I need to get transparent paint so you guys can, I can paint on this stuff. Okay, here. Snuggly is like, I'm going to kill someone. I'm Orphea. Ain't nobody in the Nexus better than me. I'm going to kill someone. The problem for Orphea is Taunt Varian in this case. If he taunts, then Raynor gets extra damage, Sylv does unfurling shadows with the festering root wounds, maybe even a silence, and so we can be silenced for one and 
0.25 seconds plus 2.5 seconds. In theory, Orpheus silenced for 3.75 seconds. Well, in practice, it doesn't even take that long to make Orphea go bye-bye. So we got to be careful and wait for either the taunt to come out or the wailing arrow to come out, something. Yes, Stukov needs to pass the the healing pathogen between people, but as as Junkrat, you can be in let's see, does that show up on stream? Yes, it does. Okay. So Junkrat can be back over here and we don't have to worry so much about somebody diving into him. Because even if Varian dives the Junkrat, the rest of the team can't follow up very well. Stukov, so Junkrat's in this area. Stukov can be in this area just to pass the healing pathogen around, and then he steps back. Um, Snugly, yes, Orphea needs to bounce forward and bounce backwards constantly. But again, we want our tank Johanna to be in front of our damage Orphea and we want to wait for our bruiser Urel to be able to get in there okay unpause yeah so four of us right there we just got too close that's the only thing it came down came down to is we got two packed closely together and then the light bomb hit four people so stuns, lots of shields on an already pretty healthy variant. Ooh, variant almost died there for it. But even then, it doesn't matter that we lost the fight. Misha eventually went down, that's great. But look at this. Boom, double catapults. I don't know that they make it back to this in time. It's dropping fast, it's going. The catapults, boom. It doesn't matter that we lost Orphea. It doesn't matter that we didn't trade, that we just gave someone up, because we had macro pressure. We kept them there, and now we have two forts on both of our side to zero keeps on their side. That's fantastic. Okay, so we're playing 16 right now. We don't want to engage before 16. We're on Eve with Talenteers. There's nothing really for us to fight over at this point. Even if we have to wait for passive experience to get us there, so be it. We don't want to take an even fight. We want to... Uh, I, don't, uh, I do like the invade, but I really want us to get 16 first. So backing out of this, great. Especially because we have triple catapult on their core. All right, we're, we bunched up a little too much there. We got the nice knockback on the, on the uh, light bomb. Misha goes down. Varian really wants to kill Orphea. Sylvanas got dropped, Varian gets dropped. We go end. At this point, we go end. Oh yeah, we go end. Right now, we turn around, we run to the core, we go end. We turn around, we run to the core, we go end. Right now, we don't need to push the cart. The cart's not gonna finish the core. We run to the core, we end. We get as much pressure on the core to where they can't do anything. The ninja's not bad. Having one person on the cart's not terrible, but we could be getting core health right now and making it so that they're their pressure's too much. Okay, so now if we didn't choose that, four people are walking with the Sentinel, one person with the cart. Four people with the Sentinel, one with the cart. We're doing this backwards. Four people with the Sentinel, one with the cart. Misha can stop the, the cart for way too long, and now they're going to kill the Sentinel, and the cart's not going to finish the core, even though we've killed all the other buildings. Four people with the Sentinel, one with the cart. Okay, Sentinel died. Oh, the stupid well took three shots. So we're going to get this to like the 70s because we lost those three shots. Uh, maybe like the, the 50s. 10%. Alright, we got it to an even 40. 27 now with our stuff in there. We don't care about the enemy team anymore. At this point, we need to just hit the core. If we get a big rip tire, fantastic. But just hit the core, it's at 25%. Or if he's going to die. Just hit the core, 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 just hit the core. We would end the game if we just hit the core. We're starting to hit the core. Yes, now we were doing it right, and we win. Okay, so it's a good game. We ended it in 14 minutes, 21 seconds. We played it very well. We probably couldn't have ended it five minutes sooner, but we probably could have ended it 30 seconds to 60 seconds sooner, which is still worthwhile. So, okay, wait for all of this to fade. Um, I like this, I like this. I don't mind this, 
but I think in time you'll probably move away from it just because you'll see that the the cooldown reduction from the four is enough and you just find yourself running out of mana a lot. Um, the the subdue at seven is fantastic. Blessed momentum's not bad. Um, but the subdue, the big slow, huge, and they have an extra body in Misha, so you're gonna be able to proc that really well. You only have to have the side part of the quest for it to be valuable. Getting the big part of the quest is great. Um, let's see, oh, announcements. Um, getting the big part of the quest is absolute gravy, but you can get the the small part of the quest all the time with just procking it on people. Um, I love Holy Fury, but it is mathematically the weakest talent on the tier. Um, you'll get the most burst damage out of Roar. You'll be able to get vision and stuff with Blessed Hammers, but that is one more thing to manage. Roar and Holy Fury are just kind of baked in. You don't have to worry about them, so I, I usually go with Roar. Um, yeah, I don't mind this. I Crushing Jaws worked well. I do think that we probably could have had a few uh, Sentinel fights where Eternal Feast just forced them off. I like this. I think this is great. Shuts down Rainer and some of Sylvanas' damage and some of Rexar's damage. Uh, this one's fantastic, but it is the highest skill cap talent on the tier, but it, it absolutely puts in work. F Shove is fine, but Flail works easier for Light Bomb and such. Um, this is great. It's, again, high skill cap, but that root in the silence is just vicious. Um, Super Strain is fantastic if you've got something like Taunt coming at you. So I like that. Um, Anduin has a root. Rhaegar, or Rexar has a stun. Varian has Taunt. So I, I like the Super Strain. Mind Build, Endless Nades, thank you. Um, tricky Shuffles and Endless Nades do work pretty well together, but you made Blow em Up work just fine. Like it, like it. Uh, you could go lots of different ways here. I don't think she has a bad seven. Um, here, the spell power, I think, is the best one. So, good job. And then the the armor reduction and the percent health is just fantastic. So, I like that, too. Um, so, I don't really like that she took Merc Queen. So, to show you, this says Elite on the Sentinel camp, which means... Merc Queen doesn't work on the Sentinel camp. It only works on the turrets on this camp, or if you're defending your vision camp. Those guys get bigger. So I don't love that. I think for, for her case, she could have picked Possession to do pretty well. Um, I like this. This is good. This is fine. I, I don't dislike it. Um, here, I would have rather seen either of the others. Attack speed. Oh, we wasn't able to finish that. Lionheart. This is my least favorite talent on Varian. I hate that Ghost of AJ took it. He should have taken Victory Rush, but hey, good for us. This is fine, but the Orphea damage, he might have wanted the, uh, the Protect. And then this is fine. This is probably what he should have taken. Though if you take Warbringer, you can take the, the Juggernaut charge too. So... Oh, I suppose I should look here too. Great damage, great damage. Look at how low our death count was. That's fantastic. Yeah, I I agree, Hector. I would have liked to have seen Exterminator here as well. Um, they sure, but it's that she does. 30% more damage, not 60%. It's that she buffs stuff 60% and deals an additional 30. So that that's good. Um, and we can see that their team definitely did struggle against it. Um, but I, I've got to think that taking 
exterminator would have helped that more than taking that and having possession to quickly just yeah 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 the the principle is still sound having possession to just quickly turn a, a wave in their favor even when there's not a sentinel around would have been a bigger deal and having exterminator on rainer i think would have been a bigger deal too so let's look at the towers of doom you guys promised me a little bit of spice that one 14 minutes 21 seconds you played that pretty clean i'm i'm happy with that and again the only talent in the whole game that i hated that anybody took was lion heart on variant because it puts all your eggs in one basket and it's a lousy basket at that okay we got diablo we got vala we got anduin tychus and diva and the enemy team didn't take any blinds okay so you can blind Diablo AA, you can blind Vala AA, you can blind Tychus AA, you can blind Diva AA. I mean, yes, you can blind anybody, but for all of them, that's part of their primary kit that you guys are going to be using. So I would have liked to have seen some blind from them. I, I've got to feel like they, they were trying to take some of these away from you just to... To be, oh, wait a second. Oh, that's NGS signups. Freaked me out, Jack. I was like, what? The season starts when? Okay. And you're even building AA and AA. Is Tychus going grenade at least? Like, why didn't they take a blind? The battle begins. I think you go nade build, Five, but that's just me. Four, three, two, one. Let the okay, begin. looking at things, I like D.Va's double soak better than Yorel's double soak in this case, and D.Va's ability to quick join a fight and zone off with both defensive matrix and with um, mech explosion self-destruct. Okay, let's just stick and move. We don't have to take a big fight here. Um, we do want to get that experience globe, though. Sad. Okay. Pause right here. Satan. I'm going to pick on Satan for a minute. Hopefully this doesn't backfire. I want you to look at your pathing here, Satan. You're the highest health person on the team, and you went very safe. Vala was here in the middle, and if they had collapsed on her, probably could have died. So what I would have liked to have seen for Diablo is more hanging out in this bush and being able to stop their rotation here on the right side. Even a flame stomp. If you can just put a flame stomp from this area right here, you can make it at that point. Let me see. Here, I'm going to move this down to there. Okay, if you can put a flame stomp through this area, they're going to react to it, and it's going to slow down their rotation. And yes, that, that sounds very simple and very easy, and it's probably not going to work, but it does. And, and even if we can buy our team a couple of seconds, we're probably not going to kill them. They might even get all the experience. But if we're on our wave a little bit faster, if we're on our camp a little bit faster, seconds add up over a game if you look at olympic races and such yes it, it's very cool when we see someone like uh, usain bolt or even in horse races someone like secretariat that just wins by this huge margin but most of the time it's actually that somebody wins by just this super small measurement in those cases and so being able to delay a rotation and pick up a couple of seconds sounds small. But as we do that over the course of a game, we're going to wreck. Um, for example, right there, right there. Imagine if we had delayed their rotation and thus we finished this camp two seconds sooner and we decide right away we're going in two seconds, Diablo steals this camp and Junkrat runs away. So two seconds was all it would have taken, and we would have taken a camp from them and maybe even killed Junkrat. 
and so we want to find as many times as we can buy those two seconds as possible because if we can buy them for little or no cost that's pretty worth it i mean that sounds stupid when i say it that way but the the more times that we can buy those couple of seconds throughout a match especially when they're free we want to do that because that's how we get a mega lead like right here i they gave you this wall basically for the cost of some mana. Well, mana regenerates. We're going to get away. Anduin's keeping everybody healthy. We just got half of one cannon tower, the gate, the other cannon tower, and the, the top wall. All things we wanted. They got nothing. We're even ahead on experience. I mean, not by, by much. Yeah, we're barely ahead on experience, but... Tassadar went mid to try to help out. Oh, Diablo. Hoo -hoo. Diablo didn't go down. Hey, we used a trinket. I bet Muradin's wishing he had used a trinket right now. You should have just ground or uh, slammed him against the wall there Just to get the little bit of health and then Anduin pulls you out. So great trade. We killed Muradin So that one was really free for us We're ahead on experience by almost a thousand now. So Real close to a thousand that that's gonna add up Because we're gonna hit sevens first Muradin went mid because your not keeping up with D.Va like, look at this. Diva is that thousand experience that we're ahead. So we saw Murden on the map. I would be interested to see what uh, what the comms were right there. Yeah, I don't love this going in on this. I'd rather just have taken the camp right away and then while they were here look at an invade after we have our camp pushing Diablo's getting some souls oh hey it does show it right there thanks game yeah so we we spent too much time here the little bit of advantage that we had of this spawning faster we didn't take and so we didn't have an opportunity to invade the Junkrat traps in a great spot. I think we're still gonna get more done. Way to put some damage into that tower, because now the tower's gone. It's okay if Snugly gets rooted right there. Ooh, good pull, Dynasty. Good pull. Nice, and we got him. Okay, at this point, we won the fight. We need to get healthy first. But Murden's down for 12 seconds. Now we just take both points. So the the Murden has had some unlucky deaths here. Um, for the enemy Murden player, while I think that give him the axe is fine, I would have liked to have seen you take Skullcracker here. Because Skullcracker messes with Diablo more than Diablo taking a a bit more damage from Muradin's auto attacks. Muradin has some great throughput as a tank, but if you can interrupt Diablo with Skullcracker, that's fine too. And the the 50% that you, ooh, Snuggly, Snuggly gonna die, Snuggly gonna die. Oh no, Snuggly. Ooh, good green cleanse. Good green cleanse. Oh, Muradin dead again. Um, so, 50% extra damage on Give Him the Axe is great. Skullcracker has 90% every third hit. So it's 30% extra damage, right? But it also has a stun. So yes, you lost 20% damage. Granted, it has the modifier of stunned root slowed, but Muradin can create that himself. But for your team, I really like Skullcracker at the moment um, because those, those micro stuns absolutely add up. And they mess with the Diablo healing, so that's important too. Alright, so the lull before the storm, someone pings that this is coming. This is great timing for us if we can just be right on it, clear it, 
it's going to make it so they feel like they don't quite have time to pick up theirs. Are they going for theirs? They're dilly-dallying. Yeah, they don't have time. Yeah, Junkrat is copying your build. What a weird guy. So here, we're up a, a little bit on experience, but not a talent tier. We don't want to fight until... Ooh, lots of rubies out there, too. Good APOC. What's his face goes down. Snuggly's going to die. You're dead, Snuggly. Run to the fort. Let it save you. Use the fort. Keep dancing. Keep dancing. No! <laughs> Okay, now we get to take the point, and the uh, the camp even, and we picked up the URL. All right, let's rewind this. We did good, but let's rewind it and see. It was a bit chaotic. I probably followed Snuggly a bit too much. Um, Snuggly, I, th I think you got to be very fortunate here because the, the camp hit the tower and took, converted it to your side and the enemy team didn't quite collapse on you. But I absolutely love the Reign of Vengeance to seal the APOC. Um, you just stayed in there super aggressive. <laughs> oh man, Tychus getting the finish for you. All right, so we did a much better job of using this terrain here to split them and they chased the Vala, but we got away. So, if if you were aware of the fact that they had taken the bottom tower, or you had taken the bottom tower with your mercenary camp, that was very good awareness and reading the map and all good things. There is part of me that thinks that you were very lucky, but I'd rather be lucky than... Uh, dead so I'll take it good job trying to burn that down um, you can if you interrupt junk rat it drops over the thing dead so your uh, grenade can can help with that my bad at don't worry, I end all the time. Nice cleanup. Snuggly picking on people. Yeah, Snuggly's so far ahead in hero damage. Okay, so right here, you just killed three. You know Deckard's not going to take the fort. What can we do on the map? I think we've got enough time that we could have raced up here and gotten this wave and probably this tower and made it back safe to stuff. I don't know that we try to rip this beforehand because it's so close, but we do have one person, probably Tychus, back here to cap because the other three can create a, a very good defensive barrier in this area so that they can't get past. Oh, Snuggly dives away. Snuggly's dead, but... Get me off of this camera, follow crap. All right, Corso. I love the, the Tychus aggression here. What are you gonna do? There's nothing to siege. They're going to stay in the dead zone. Like, it, it doesn't matter right now. So I I can't help but feel like that was a mistimed ult. Now, we traded one for one. We got the bell tower. We do not need to give them free... Or we got the altar. We do not need to give them free damage on this horde. And by having everybody leave, that's what we're kind of doing. We might even... Ah, uh, one, E... I wish there was a better way to, to get out of that. So it is good that we took the camp, but again, good, better, best. We gave up the bottom fort because we took the camp. We we could have defended there, and then when Vala came up, she could have gotten the camp. 
but the only reason they're getting this camp here is because they took this bell tower. If we were defending the bell tower in this area and had a camp pushing towards us, they wouldn't be worried about that camp right now and it would just be sitting waiting for us to have time to get to it. Yeah, I like our positioning better. I do think Snuggly's getting away with too much. Like, Snuggly should die more. You died once. Um, they're letting you get away with a lot. But overall, they seem to be very stuck together in a, in a line. Oh, I shouldn't do that because it selects stuff. Oh, does he get the pop combo? He does, and we get the... Yeah, we got everything on that poor fella. Alright, so Bala's alive, Bala's alive. Is, are we going to get the Junkrat? We are. Is Tychus going to die for it? It doesn't look like it. Ooh, if we had let the... If we had let the Tassadar walk a little bit more, he would have put himself on this wall. Heroes. All right, so 32 to 5. We better win this game, for the love of all that is good and holy. The answer is not the boss. The reason that the answer is not the boss is because the boss grants four shots, and we have five to go, and they're not going to take the boss. What we could do instead that does grant shots is six cap. Now, I don't know that we're going to get all of them, Ooh, do they kill Snuggly? Snuggly gonna die. Yeah. Alright. So they're down to one shot. That's cool. We don't have Vala. That sucks. That's a direct Gazlo quote. That sucks. So, imagine if instead we get the kills and we rip mid fort. Now we've cut the map in half for them, right? After we get the mid fort. We just start working on either top or bottom. It could be either. I actually kind of like top first in this case. And the reason for that is then they think we're going boss. And so now if we want to take boss, we can take boss for free. If we have control of both of these, how much more difficult is it for them to get to this shrine when it pops? And if we have control of both of them, it's worth six and it ends the game. Oh, this is where I'm glad it doesn't have the spoiler. Oh, I hate that positioning. Um, Anduin's really reckless. Alright, thank you, thank you for using APOC there. Oh my goodness. Alright, so we didn't end the game. Um, if we see all five there, that's when we send one person over here like D.Va to cap. Um, there's, there's a game with, I'm pretty sure it was Regen Blue a few seasons ago, where there's just this huge fight over here. And dang it, I got something with 50,000 health, the altar. There's just this huge fight. And you watch the Phoenix dirty as that character is just slowly crawl over and cap this one and it ends the game so the boss didn't end the game it's off the table for another two and a half minutes and they got a couple of kills and even stuff up we don't love this position anymore if if we had taken a couple altars and the, the team fight happened as it did Okay, they take the boss, and we get to roughly the same point as we are now. Maybe they're ahead a couple more shots. But more likely, we just... Oh, I thought Diablo just cast Apoc there, and I was like, I don't see anything casting. What was that animation? But more likely, if we see them heavy top... Oh, uh, this is a great fight for us. Take that, Merton. Chainlock stunned. Let him die. 150 health. Does Diva get him? She does. All right, two people are dead. We got a one spawning, so we'll be fine. 
yeah. This game, I feel like, is one that we could have won two to three minutes faster. And the way we do that is not taking the boss. There's only one condition that I like taking the boss, and that is if it's going to win the game. Don't be a jerk there, Jack. Nobody's tough as Jack. That doesn't mean no one can... Or Jack has to be ruder than anyone. Yeah, they're delaying this way too much. Alright. So we took the boss and it got us down to one shot. I didn't love that. Because it wasn't game ending. We take the boss when it's game ending. Um, instead, if we had taken some forts, if we had a big fight that we lost, we just go work on the sixth fort so that way they can't do anything while they have a numbers advantage except take back stuff that we've taken from them. If we can delay them on the boss and somebody caps the bottom fort, it'll get a couple of shots, probably even all five. And so I would have rather have seen that idea of, okay, we're going to charge in and we're going to crush some forts than the boss. The boss, if, if we had been at four shots, I'd be fine with the boss call because it would have ended the game. But we were at five. And so long as there is one core health left, the other team has a chance on Towers of Doom. So if we had taken forts... Forts still give experience on Towers of Doom. It increases our level lead. Forps, forts help us take over the map so that we control where they're going. We check them once again because they're responding to us. There's three camps on the map. If we can get five of those nine sappers to pass into the dead zone, we win. If we can get one of those sappers to pass the dead zone, and then we get them to go after the bottom keep... To take it back, we rush to boss and we win the game. So the the boss could have waited. I Again, I don't love taking the boss too early on this map. Because if you take it too early and it could have been your win condition and you gave up an altar for it or something, well now you could have got that altar and then gone to the boss. Or you could have taken a couple of forts and then gone to the boss and had it be your win condition. Instead, it left us open for a fight that they got to take on, on relatively even terms. We're going to back this up a little bit. On relatively even terms. Oh yeah, because I don't think we were 20s. Yeah, I think both teams have 16, but not 20s. Come on, game. I do hate the rewind function in this game, but that's okay. We'll just click there. Okay. I'll seek for a second. Oh, that actually wasn't bad. Okay, so the fight is on even talent tiers. Sure, we're ahead of level. We don't actually know where Junkrat is. We can't see him, but we can see his presence with all the traps around. Yeah, big root, negative 15 armor and everyone, and they just cast everything. Yeah. So that, that was a fight that didn't necessarily favor them directly, but indirectly it did, because we let them take an even fight. We didn't have to. Like, we're rude. Not like B-step and rude, but we're rude. We don't make let people fight honorably. We don't care about this even numbers garbage. We want to check them. Nobody in chess is like, oh, I took your pawn, so you should take my pawn so that things are still fair. Nah, screw that. We check them constantly. We we could have taken mid, bot looks pretty low, 
and now they're chasing us around we take top we take the top camp by the time that they've taken bottom we can defend the top and maybe something goes in by the time they've taken bottom and we've taken top and the camps coming their way and we go take this camp here and we take bottom and they're constantly running us around the map way more fun than losing a team fight pre-20 we would get 21st there would be another altar phase that we're going to be just fine with and we let them have a hail mary pass and they got a touchdown off of it we're still ahead on the scoreboard no big deal but we gave them hope and you want to snuff out their hope. You want to be mean like that. Like this fight, we snuff out their hope. We're good with that. Everything else was just more desperation. And it wasn't going to work. You just can't win a 2v5. Especially with no damage. Keeps have 17,000 health, and I would have to go back to like right here to figure out what the the boss is. So we'll find the boss's health. The boss has 15,000 health. So in the time that you kill the boss, you very easily could have taken out this fort that was already low and been working on another one, and start them chasing you around. The map. Let's see if there's any talents I hate, but I don't think so. This is better than bold strategy right now. I actually want them to remove some of the nerf on bold strategy. All right, end of the game. Yeah, the replay viewer seems to be doing a lot better today with just me. Okay, I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it, I like it. Overpowering Nightmare is very fun, but Domination ain't bad. Hellgate's fantastic. I like it. This is the most important talent you have here. Thank you for taking it. Um, Gloom's fine with how much spell damage they have, if you wanted to take that as well. Um, but I don't hate everything here. Um, and you did great, but Farflight is the most important talent that you took. And Rain, fantastic. Uh, Yeah, I, I like this one, but you could have also gotten light well. Desperate Prayer seemed to work extremely well. It, uh, it, it's what sometimes Ancestral wishes it could be, just with the low cooldown and big heal instant. Not that Ancestral's bad, but... Um, here, you, you could have gone any of them. Where you didn't take the grenade at one... I wouldn't necessarily take the grenade, and I think this works really worked really well for you. You could have also gone the overkill damage. I think any of them worked. Bob and Weave, fantastic. Plus the the engage that or the range that you get makes his range just super annoying. A blade of armor could have worked here as well. I like that. I like that. Um, you don't have to always take hit the nitrous. Uh, there's another one that I can't think of off the top of my head. Let me look it up. That's also a, a pretty solid one and also a booster's talent. It is, survey says, get on point. Um, get on point also helps you quite a bit when you're double soaking. Now, if we come here to uh, stats, doesn't look like you were doing bad on double soaking so that that's okay but yeah um azrael the the worry is not necessarily how much time it takes to six cap because we probably wouldn't have six capped but if we can take control of more of the towers now they're chasing us around the map and eventually we get to catch them on a rotation or take a fight under a fort and just slow them down immensely Okay, so that would be the only thing I would possibly change here, is get on the point instead of hit the nitrous. Um, full metal works great when you're double soaking, so I really like that choice. Um, 
all we know is that the enemy team lost, so no big deal. I think I would have liked to have seen Stay a While instead of Lornado, and I think I would have liked to have seen Herodric Staff, because Stunny Staff go brrrr. And here, I think I would have liked to have seen Imposing Presence, just because there was so much of the enemy team that was auto attack damage, and Tychus really scares Muradin, and you would get passive benefit out of that as well. So, overall, we won. Could we clean stuff up? Yes, the biggest area to clean up for me is let's take down some keeps instead of the boss on towers. And for Hanamura, yeah, we probably could have ended 20 to 30 seconds faster, maybe 60, if we just rushed at the core when we had the Sentinel and had one person moving the cart instead of four. But no big deal. We won. Congratulations. Um, you're going up against, I believe it's the core bouncers, whenever you can get the dang match scheduled at this point. So we, we wish you well. And yeah, let me know anything else that I can help with or questions I might answer for this one. But we're going to go ahead and end this stream. Good job, the Devil's Rejects.